Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we're going to be painting some more holiday card designs. So let's jump right in and get started. <gasps> what do you think? Okay, so today we are doing some more holiday card designs. Again, I am using my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbooks. Um, I will put the link down below for them. I really love this paper and they're great just to paint straight onto. I have my Winsor Newton professional watercolors and then my Emma Lefebvre and Craftimo brushes. I have my size 12, my size six is somewhere in my size two. So let's jump in and start. So I thought I'd start off with my first design, which is gonna be a loose poinsettia. So I recently did a workshop where I did um, a detailed one, which takes a little bit longer, which is fun, but um, I thought it'd be fun to try and do a loose version of it. So I am going to start by taking some red. I have my Windsor red here and I don't want it to be too saturated. And I'm just gonna start by doing kind of like leaf shapes I'm going to start by doing three leaf shapes in a circle. One, two, three. And while these are still wet, I'm just going to take up some of that water. They don't have to be perfectly shaped. I'm going to go back in with a bit more, even some darker red, and just tap kind of towards the center like that, just for a little bit of a shadow. Then I'm going to do three more in between those spaces. I'm going to go one and I can kind of just come out to make it look a little bit bigger. You can even just draw it with the tip of your brush. Two. I'm just going to try and go around again to make it bigger and then three. Like so. And if they touch some areas of the smaller ones, that's totally fine. Then again, I'm going to take some darker red. And I'm just going to, I'm going to go down the center of these, I think. Yeah. Like that. And maybe down the center of these ones too, while it's still wet. I haven't actually done a loose poinsettia before, so I don't know if you can tell. Um, this one seems a little bit too saturated and these, I just need to move the water around. So I'm just going to lift up some of the color there just to get a bit of a highlight. Okay, and then we're gonna do a couple more. So I'm gonna try and make them bigger. I'm gonna go around the top of those smaller ones. There and here. And you want to leave a little bit of white space so you see a bit of a difference um, or a separation in between the poinsettia petals. Okay, and I'm just going to go back in with some brighter red. I feel like it's a little too light. And then I'm going to go in with that darker red again. And I'm gonna go and use that darker red, my alizarin and Crimson, right around the edges where the first petals would kind of be casting a shadow. And it doesn't have to be perfect, this is loose, right? It's We can add our little veins later once it's dry to make it look a bit more, not detailed, but just give it a little bit more structure, like so. Okay, and then we're gonna start filling in, well, and this one's bleeding in a little bit too much. That's fine. Okay, we're gonna start putting in some of the leaves. So I'm just gonna grab some olive green here, and I'm just gonna start putting in some leaves. Again, these don't have to be perfect. You're gonna have two coming out from one spot. And 
You have a little bit of a color bleed from the red into the green. And then while those are still wet, I'm probably going to go back in with some darker green. So my perline green. I'm just going to tap some of the darker green. Just kind of add it in there. Like that making it nice and loose. Okay. Then I'm going to take my size two brush and I'm going to just start doing a little bit of some pine needles behind just to kind of give it a little bit more something. I don't know what something. <laughs> so like these like little, um, empty kind of spaces. I'm just going to do a couple stems and then I'm just going to using my size two brush and really light pressure. I'm just going to flick out some pine needles and you can turn your paper if you need to. Just wherever you feel like it could use a little bit more filler. You could just do even small ones. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to let it dry. And then you can do a little bit more, not detail, but just some line drawing kind of on top. I might actually put a couple more pine needles. Then I'm going to take my darker red again and I'm just going to do with my size two brush some really fine kind of veins going down the center and I'm just curving them slightly. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit more and I'm just going to do really fine kind of curved veins coming off that initial stem, not stem, like vein, you know what I mean? <laughs> Swear words have not been my jam lately. like that and then you can even do some on the green stems if you like or the leaves oh my goodness words come on words makes sense <laughs> okay and then for the center I'm gonna take some of my cadmium yellow which is a pretty opaque yellow and I'm just going to do some little seeds on top. I might take a little bit of brown just to darken it up towards the center like that. There we go. And then I think for this one, I would add a bit of gold at the top and the bottom just to frame it. Now I've gone too far over the edges. So I wouldn't put it on the sides, but if you do have room on your sides, um, you could definitely do that. So I'm just going to take some gold. This is my Etcher Lab gold metallic palette, if you haven't noticed. 
and I'm just going to do a freehand line across the top. line across the bottom like that okay so there is our loose poinsettia card okay so for our next card let's do a simple wreath and just find a circular object to place on top or in the middle of your card so you can just trace kind of like a nice even circle and I wouldn't recommend doing it necessarily all the way around um, just nice and lightly just so you have some sort of a guide and then I'm going to take my size six brush and we're just going to make this so simple. Um, and we're just going to do some berries, same kind of thing. I'm going to start off with some really saturated, darker berries. Like so, and then I'm going to wash off my brush. So it's just water. And I'm just going to slightly touch some of those darker berries so we get a lighter value of some. Just gives it a nice contrast of the light and the dark. Like so. I can do some there and then maybe some here. Just a few. I'm leaving just a tiny bit of white space just for a bit of a highlight. Again, just taking my water to get these nice light values. Do some there and some there and then maybe because I like to work in odd numbers, do another one here, another little cluster. it off like so okay and now I'm just gonna take some olive green or whatever green actually you know what no let's change it up let's do like a bluish green so I'm gonna take a little bit of blue like some of my um, turquoise and just mix it a little bit with my green and just get a really light wash of it and I'm going to do some like bluish green kind of leaves. Like so. And I'm just going to start by going around. Like this. And we can always change it up too. I'm going to do some over here. And then coming from this side. And if they're still wet, you can always, um, you know, maybe drop a little bit of oops, green or blue in there just to get a nice kind of, oops. I'm not going with what I'm saying. Uh, if it's still wet, which it wasn't, I'm just going to wet it back up a little bit. I'm just going to tap a little bit of green in there. I'm just going to re-wet these again. Tap a little bit of my olive green in there. Like so. Just makes it look interesting. Wet it up again. Or even some more of the blue. Like that. And then we can do some, we could even have some like white-ish kind of cottony buds so I'm just gonna do some light gray kind of ovals and then we'll connect it with um, a brown stem 
So I'm just going to do light wash of black, which makes it gray like that. And they're just kind of like these ovals. Then I'm going to take my smaller brush just so I don't go overboard with the amount of water. If I can find my smaller brush. Okay, and I'm just going to take some burnt umber, just a light wash of it. I'm just going to do these like little stems and they can bleed a little bit into those kind of cottony white buds. I only have two on this side like that. And then you can see there's a bit of a gap here. So we can just start filling in with maybe some um, pine needles. Like it doesn't have to be even all the way around. So maybe I'll do, I'm just taking my pearling green, which is my nice dark green. And I'm just going to do some pine needles to kind of fill it in. that and just fill it in wherever you feel like it needs it it doesn't have to be even all the way around that just something simple and then you can always write something in there after um, and then with this one I might add a bit of my metallic paint I'm gonna do this like champagne -y color this time I think it would go nicely like so that's a cute one I like that one super simple and just really pretty Okay, and then for our last and final design, I thought maybe we could do just some like hanging ornaments or something. So pick your color scheme that you wanna do. I think I'm gonna go with that bluish green again. Um, I really liked it. So I'm just gonna add some turquoise and then some of my sap green. And I'm just gonna do a circle here. Fill it in, a decently light wash. And then I'm just gonna go in with a bit more darker color, just around, just to give it a bit of shadow, a bit of dimension. Darkest around one side. using my pearly and green as a shadow here like that I'm gonna do another one a red one I want to make it a bit lighter so we have that highlighted area And grabbing our more vibrant red and just adding it to one side so we have a highlighted area up here and then it's going to get darker underneath just going to blend it out a bit I'm going to grab a bit more of my dark red and just add it to the underneath here like that and then I'm going to add one more. I think I'm going to do like a pink because why not? Kind of more like a modern palette. 
a little bit lighter. And if you want to trace the circles to make them perfect, you definitely can do that. Like that, and then just grab a little bit more darkness, add it to that one side. You can add a little bit of green to your pink, and that will give it that shadow color as well. like so. And then I'm going to let that dry. Um, cause I want to do the tops. I want to do the little gold tops on there and then a string, but I don't want it to bleed into the color. So let's just let this dry for a second. Okay. Like that. Then I'm going to take some of that. Actually, I think I'm going to take like the champagne kind of color for the tops of these, just cause I like the color palette. Just do some kind of rectangles on top. Like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my smaller brush and just do a little, little hook. And if you wanted to, you can take this color and just do, you know, some little dots or patterns on the bulbs. It's going to do some little lines. Maybe a little stars. I think I might even grab a little bit of a darker metallic and just put it, let's see if this works, on the side so it just gives it a little bit of shadow too. Hmm. I don't know if that's working. <laughs> And then we're going to let that dry and I'm just going to, where's my, there it is. I'm just going to take my ruler and a black pen and I'm just going to do the string all the way up to the top. Like that. You can even do like a little tie on it if you like, a little bow, like that. And then you can just write your message underneath. And there you go. There are three new watercolor holiday card designs. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye. Can you say bye?